Hey, Fortitude here. The move from 3G to 4G was a small but impactful one. It was little more than a speed and reliability boost. However, it enabled people for the first time to stream HD video almost anywhere, play online games and watch YouTube on the go. But 5G will shake things up like never before. Because it's not just an improvement on current technology, it's an entirely new beast. Looking at the radio frequency spectrum, 3G signals lie in the 1.6 to 1.9 GHz range. 4G is around 2.5 GHz, but 5G will operate between a huge range of 1 to 86 GHz. That's huge! On top of this, 5G will also broadcast in an entirely new classification of radio frequency that has never been used before for mobile data, millimeter wave frequencies. All this means there is a boatload more energy being carried through the airwaves at any one moment. And there could be some really unsettling consequences of this. I'll talk about those in just a minute. But first, if you're thinking, isn't this going to cost a shitload of money and require huge new infrastructure? You'd be correct. The issue with millimeter waves is they don't travel very far at all. Each transmitter will have an effective range of anywhere between a few hundred meters to one kilometer. Unlike what you may have heard, 5G can penetrate walls and windows, it's just not very good at it. And thick walls will significantly dilute the signal strength. So, in dense urban areas, the transmission range of a single 5G antenna could be less than 100 meters, far, far less than current 4G. Furthermore, the 5G signal range will be absolutely destroyed by rain. The high frequencies employed by 5G are easily absorbed and thus halted by water. And yes, in case you were wondering, that includes the water in the human body. The ingenious solution to 5G's lack of range is more antennae. A lot more. Luckily, 5G antennas can be far smaller than their 4G equivalent. New backpack-sized boxes, called small cells, will be placed roughly every 250 meters around cities. They will be on lampposts, traffic lights, the side of buildings. There may be one or more coming soon to your street. They act like relay stations, repeating a signal from a much larger base tower somewhere nearby. These tiny boxes will form a huge web that is sufficiently large and dense that it can fill in any blank signal spots, overcoming the issue of poor 5G range. The antennas will also employ a technology called beamforming. This essentially means that instead of indiscriminately shooting out 5G signals in all directions like 4G does, the signals will be sent directly to your device. The web of small cell antennas will triangulate your exact location at all times, so it knows precisely where to shoot the beams. They will even be able to calculate how to bounce beams of windows and other objects to reach you. The issue is that to do all this properly, thousands of small cells are needed. It's estimated that New York will require over 10,000 small cell antenna boxes to provide the entire metropolitan area with reliable coverage. You won't be able to turn a corner without seeing one of these things. But there's an obvious issue here. Won't this be tremendously expensive? Yes. Won't rural areas and even towns be left years behind the curve because all this money and infrastructure will be focused solely on large cities? Absolutely. It could be the same story as 4G all over again. 4G in large cities is mostly fantastic, but there are built up areas of the UK today that still have piss poor 4G coverage. 10 years after its introduction. Furthermore, most countries still haven't actually rolled out the full potential of 4G. Even in cities such as London and New York, 4G can reach speeds of up to 300 megabits per second in lab conditions and 100 megabits per second in the real world. But according to an open signal report, the average speed of 4G in America is just 16 megabits per second, and the UK 23 megabits per second. The countries with the fastest speeds are South Korea, Singapore, Norway, and the Netherlands, which all have average speeds of over 40 megabits per second. Although, things may be different with 5G. Companies all over the world seem to have a stick up their respective rear ends to get 5G to everyone, everywhere. AT&T says it will have nationwide 5G coverage in the US by 2020, 
and Vodafone and EE in the UK have already turned on 5G in some cities as of May and 15 other UK towns and cities will have coverage by the end of the year. If these mobile giants are so keen to get 5G on the table faster than fish and chips, then there must be some serious commercial benefits, far more so than 4G ever offered. Well, yes, there are. They're all getting their wires in a tangle over 5G because it will enable lots of exciting new tech that they can sell to consumers for a pretty penny. The first and most obvious is faster mobile data speeds. Standards authorities such as 3G PP stipulate that for a network to call itself 5G, the base station has to be able to support download speeds of 20 gigabits per second and uploads of 10 gigabits per second. This equates to a 2.5 gigabytes per second download speed. At those speeds, you could download a full HD movie every second. This is hundreds of times faster than everyone's home broadband speeds, unless for some strange reason you pay an extortionate fee for dedicated multi-gigabit lines and you're now using all that power to watch YouTube. Now, of course, no one is actually going to get 20 gigabits per second download speed on 5G in the real world. Not with all those blasted walls and people knocking around. Oh, and don't forget the evil rain. But early estimates suggest that users could get anywhere from 100 megabits per second to 4 gigabits per second real world download speeds straight to their mobile device. So there you go, you can now achieve your lifelong ambition of filling your phone's 64 gigabytes of storage with random HD movies in about two minutes time. This much download power is actually rather redundant. It far exceeds what an average user could fully utilize, but the speed isn't what makes 5G so world changing. It's the latency. Latency is simply the time in milliseconds it takes for two devices to talk to each other. Average 4G latency is 50 milliseconds, so when you type a web address into your phone and press go, it takes 50 milliseconds for that request to reach the nearest 4G antenna, and then another 50 milliseconds for the data required to display that web page to return to your phone. 5G latency, however, is less than one millisecond. Even with modern breakneck fiber home internet speeds, we are used to waiting for web pages to load, anywhere from 20 milliseconds to one second on the strongest home broadband connections. But with a latency of one milliseconds or less, as soon as you press load on your phone or laptop, that web page will appear instantaneously. There will be no delay that is perceivable by the human visual system, so long as the web server on the other end doesn't provide a bottleneck. And yes, you will be able to replace your home broadband service with 5G very soon if you want to. So you will regain a few milliseconds of your day. So what? Well, this may not seem like a very impactful change, but having a global data network operating with a non-existent latency opens up a realm of technological and lifestyle altering possibilities that the human race has never experienced before. One such example is in the field of self-driving cars. We all know that self-driving cars are just around the corner and semi-autonomous consumer vehicles are available to buy today. But the real change will come when 5G enables self-driving cars to talk to each other and their surroundings. Imagine that your self-driving car passes through a set of traffic lights on green at a four-way junction. Then all of a sudden, a reckless, perhaps drunk driver comes from the right-hand lane, totally ignores the red light and zooms across the junction at high speeds at a 90 degree angle to you. Normally, this would result in you smashing right into the side of that idiot in question's car, which could be fatal. But what if their car was 5G enabled and could alert some kind of cloud service that they are heading towards the junction at a ridiculous speed and your 5G enabled self-driving car can tap into that very same cloud with no delay and predict the accident happening before you even see the other car approaching. Your car could automatically slam on the brakes and potentially prevent an accident that could end your life. Furthermore, the traffic lights themselves would also be 5G enabled, and knowing there's a dangerous vehicle approaching, they could switch to red until the danger has passed. None of this life-saving synchronization could happen without the extremely low latency offered by 5G. 
If there was one overwhelming benefit to 5G, then it's probably its potential to save many thousands of lives each year by preventing traffic collisions. A cloud service may not even be required. It's thought that 5G-enabled cars could talk directly to each other and constantly emit their speed and trajectory to all other cars around it, almost as fast as the speed of light, making a collision almost impossible. They could also communicate across entire cities, alerting drivers to upcoming traffic and roadworks. And if you do get stuck in traffic, then it will be a lot smoother. Today, traffic could flow significantly faster if it weren't for those meat bags behind the wheel who constantly speed up, slow down, and change lanes every 30 seconds. This unorganized chaos causes everyone to reach their destination slower. 5G, however, will enable cars to all travel at precisely the same speed, on a sort of unlinked road train. This means that everyone gets out of the traffic jam faster. This road train will even be able to synchronize its braking across 5G, so that if the front car hits something, then a 10 car pileup could be a thing of the past. Emergency services can also be instantly alerted to the location and details of a nearby accident, and because 5G utilizes beamforming, bandwidth can be automatically reserved for the emergency service vehicles passing by the antennae, so nearby consumer data usage doesn't prevent them from doing their job. 5G will also enable some neat new tech such as wireless VR with instant response rates, which will finally prevent people from throwing up after they use a VR headset, and augmented reality with absolutely no delay and photorealistic graphics. There are some people, however, that say 5G could be the most dangerous man-made threat to our species in human history. Understandably, radiation is a huge concern for everyone. It can be an invisible killer. In the early 2000s, the widespread adoption of mobile phones sparked a long and heated debate over whether their prolonged usage is going to give us all brain cancer. But since the widespread adoption of mobile phones, there hasn't been a noticeable increase in brain tumor rates. There has been a 34% increase in reported brain tumors, but that's because our detection methods have improved over the same period that mobile phones became popular. No study has yet been able to find a strong link between the RF waves emitted by phones and increased cancer rates. In 2011, the World Health Organization declared that RF fields are possibly carcinogenic, but they explicitly stated that this doesn't mean they are. It means that the results from multiple studies are too inconclusive to say for certain. The WHO has also placed coffee and pickled vegetables into the exact same category. In reality, it's unlikely that waves emitted by current phones are actually carcinogenic because they're very weak, and these weak signals don't contain enough energy to damage human DNA or cells. The problem is that 5G waves carry significantly more energy than 4G, almost as much as a microwave oven. Turning entire cities into constantly on microwave ovens sure sounds dangerous to me. Many people, including some in the science community, have expressed their concerns that the high frequency, high energy 5G radio waves could interfere with our DNA, cause cancer, and could even be militarized. Because water is excellent at absorbing 5G waves and human skin is peppered with sweat glands containing a lot of water, some think that during riots the police could turn up 5G emissions in the area to hugely increase the body heat of the rioters. This intense feeling of burning all over the skin that it could cause could give them no choice but to disperse from the area. All this sounds very dystopian, but what's the truth? Well. We don't know yet. For every expert opinion and study that says 5G is totally safe, there is another that says it might not be. There are some accusations that are likely just fear-mongering. For instance, 5G could be used to heat human bodies as a form of crowd control. Extremely unlikely. 5G may be close to microwaves on the spectrum, but that is totally ignoring intensity. Microwave ovens concentrate a huge amount of their energy within a small, confined space. If the same microwaves were emitted outside, it would have little effect on humans. 
Guess what? Visible light is higher on the RF spectrum than microwaves. Yet we don't all cook like jacket potatoes from the inside out every time the sun shines a little bit. Because within the same area, the photons of visible light contain significantly less energy than inside a microwave oven. Just because they are a higher frequency doesn't mean they have a higher energy intensity. And so too would 5G waves contain far less energy than would pose a potential heating risk to the human body. Some scientists report that the amount of energy emitted by 5G would need to be cranked up by over a thousand times in intensity before it could pose a threat or be used as a weapon. And in regards to causing cancer, well, as far as our current knowledge of radiation is concerned, there should be nothing to worry about. All RF waves are radiation, which sounds rather scary, but for RF waves to interfere with human cells, it has to be ionizing radiation. This is a type of very high energy radiation that carries sufficient energy to detach electrons from atoms inside your body. When ionizing radiation hits the human body, it disrupts the atoms and the chemical bonds that hold our DNA together. With enough exposure, this can cause cancer and other issues such as lowered fertility and birth defects. The upper end of the visible light spectrum, UV light, is actually ionizing radiation. That's why we should all wear sunscreen outside. But 5G waves are non-ionizing. They're not even remotely close to carrying enough energy to disrupt our atoms and DNA. As far as we are aware, the worst thing that non-ionizing radiation can do to the human body is heat it up a little bit. And that's only a concern at very high intensities, as we've discussed earlier. Literally, thousands of studies have been done on the effects of non-ionizing and ionizing radiation. And yes, a few experiments with rats have thrown out some odd and worrying results. But these are dwarfed by the thousands of other studies that have overwhelmingly come to the same conclusion that it isn't possible for non-ionizing radiation to cause chromosomal or cellular damage. It simply doesn't have the required energy. It's easy to get carried away when an odd study now and then produces a disturbing result, but one should always exercise caution when using such a result to outright ignore a mountain of evidence to the contrary. After all, scientific studies can be deeply flawed in many ways, on both sides of the argument. All this means that if 5G does pose a risk to human health, it would have to be through a mechanism that we are not currently aware of. Something that truly flies in the face of our current time-tested scientific model of how radiation works. I'm not saying that it's not possible, it's just improbable. But the nature of science is to keep asking questions and testing new theories. After all, absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. Do I think we should really be testing out the effects of 5G on human health before a mass rollout? Yes, absolutely, 100%. Many in the scientific community, even those who have no current concern over its safety, think that it's irresponsible to roll out this tech without more time to thoroughly test its real world effects and consequences. Unfortunately, we're not going to get to that luxury. Hundreds of billions have been invested into 5G tech by mobile companies in every major nation. There are huge profits to be made and massive potential. So 5G is coming, whether you like it or not. Only time will tell if we all have two heads by the end of it. Today's video is sponsored by NordVPN, the only VPN to get a perfect score on PC Mag. They have thousands of super fast servers in over 60 countries. NordVPN uses military grade encryption and has absolutely no data logging. It works on any device, Android, iOS, Windows, Mac, Linux, you name it. Seriously, I even run this thing on my Android TV to watch content from around the world. I travel a lot and I often do sensitive work on my laptop, banking, messaging, private documents, etc. In coffee shops, hotel rooms and public spaces. I always use NordVPN in these instances, no questions asked, because it's easy for hackers to intercept your packets over public Wi-Fi and see everything you're doing online. 
NordVPN double encrypts your data so you can use any Wi-Fi connection, 4G or 5G, and know that you're completely protected and your data is secure. Click my unique link in the video description to get 75% off a free year plan and enter the code 40 at checkout for an extra month completely free. Thanks for watching, subscribe for a new video every week, and a big thank you to the sponsor NordVPN. Don't forget to check them out using the link below.